Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, Paul Tranny here, gonna dive into getting started in uh, with vector illustration in Illustrator, of course. So that is the plan. You know what? You can actually do vector illustration in Photoshop and even we have uh, Adobe Illustrator coming uh, to the iPad. So I'm gonna show you some of that as well and just show you like that this, there's no better time to get into Adobe Illustrator. Ugh. Sorry if my voice trailed out. Good to see you. Hello, Tim, my friend. Hello, feel free to say uh, say hi. My name is Paul Tranny. I'm gonna dive into this really fast. And uh, thanks for watching on other platforms, but hop over to behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. Um, and yeah, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, before I jump into all my stuff, know that we have a full day today. What's up? Felicia is here. Uh, so you have me for 90 minutes. Hopefully the best 90 minutes of your life. Let's not overstate it or anything. All right, uh, but then we have Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Jesus Ramirez, master of Photoshop, fantastic. Uh, and then he's doing some compositing as well. And I think Claudie's hosting him. Uh, a little illustrator with Andrew, which will be cool. Uh, diving into branding and identity design. So that's also uh, vector content as well. So I think this is gonna be really fun. Uh, a little illustrator, some Photoshop in the middle. Uh, the afternoon is, or of course, of course at noon we have illustration and illustrator, and then we get into XD. So Andrea is going to do the daily creative challenge. Kyle Webster, draw along with him as well. So all this is very much related. Uh, I bounce between all the apps, but I love the flexibility of Illustrator, and you'll easily see why. Because you could, if it's vector, you could always change it. So if you're indecisive like me. Uh, it's just the best. So uh, thanks so much for watching, guys, and hanging out with me this fine, what day is it? Wednesday? Yeah, I think it's a Wednesday. I need to actually log in as a different account. But let me take a, let me kind of show you my desktop really fast. And uh, again, we'll get this party started. Uh, welcome. Sam, good to see you. We'll talk later, huh? Kaylin, hello. Good morning. Uh, Vail as well. Uh, Michelle, Cody. Andreas, awesome. Let's get this party started. Good morning, Patricia, as well. I see you over there on Facebook. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, again, shameless self plug, but this is kind of the stuff I do. It's just like a lot of Photoshop and Illustrator based, right? So um, it tends to not matter uh, to me. Like this 3D printing stuff, this was made in Illustrator. Like everything starts in Illustrator right down here. Illustrator, right? You know what this is as well? This title art? This was started in Illustrator as well. So this is actually like a star that you lay along a path. What is that path? It's just a vector line, right? So there's a lot you can do. Uh, of course, uh, ultimately made that in Cinema 4D. And again, you just have some fun stuff. Some of this I like, some of it, you know, eh, you know, looking back in old work, you're like, oh, so embarrassing. Right, but just kind of show you what you can do. Uh, I can show you some things just kind of like on my desktop that I've, you know, we might do something like this today. Super easy to do. Uh, this as well, illustration, right? Uh, as you can see, created in Illustrator and you'll have all those fine details that you can work with. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do. Uh, I do need a tropical cocktail with my tropical shirt. This, tell me this isn't an Illustrator shirt, right? I mean, look at this, come on now, where's my, Where's my live action shot? Oops. There we go. This is, of course, I'm dressed appropriately. Look at this. This is like totally an Adobe Illustrator shirt. And in fact, this is kind of the inspiration for today and what we're gonna start with when it comes to vector illustration, right? Uh, Christian, good to see you here. Irina and Tony, what's up? Good morning. Irina from Bulgaria, awesome. Switch back over. 
Let's launch Illustrator. Oh, there's the Rhino that I was working on. Again, this is all vector content. We'll get into more of this later, but it's cool that I can jump in and change this at any time, which I love. We wanna go into presentation view. We could hit FF, see that full screen, right? Shift F will get rid of all the junk on the sides and just blocks it out with black, which is nice. So this is the presentation view. Uh, but that kind of gives you an idea of what we can do, but we're gonna start with a new document. So you can go to File, New. All right, and uh, one good thing that you could do is you can kind of poke around um, how Illustrator files are fed up, set up by going to any of these new document tabs. You can go down to Art and Illustration, and this is just a good way to kind of see how people put things together, like this abstract illustration. What is that all about? Well, again, you can take it, you can download it. This one's, most of them are gonna be small. Look at this, 273K. Nobody even knows what that is. What's a K? <laughs> right? Because we're dealing with megabytes these days, or megabits, megabits, megabytes. But here's an example of, again, vector illustration. We can come in here and like, oh, it has all these little things that I could easily select, or I could do a quickly select same fill color, boop. Oh, select all the teal ones, and let's make them uh, like a different, a different color, hopefully, again, and I'm so glad this is happening. So, so yeah, it looks like I changed it all to this sort of more pinkish color. But feel free to check those out. You get the idea. All right, so uh, I go to File New. Oh, you are too kind. Comic Sans. Is that re your real name? Comic Sans. Mm, I don't know. Um, so I, I talk about this a lot, by the way, I feel like if you've been with me before, you can make startup files and uh, that's what I've done. So we'll talk more about that later, but this is just going to be preloaded with a lot of colors and just set up with a lot of brushes, right? But that's what I usually start with. The cool thing is, is it really doesn't matter what you, it doesn't matter what you select. I typically make sure it's RGB uh, and then you can kind of jump in and start creating. So here I am, Shoop. here's a line, oh, let's change some of my default stuff. There we go. Usually it's like this, looks like this. This is like what we have, right? Drawing out a rectangle. And I get most of you know this. That's why I'm gonna try to go fast. I'm gonna give you some inspiration based on my shirt because again, flowers are cool. Exactly, kilobytes. Tim, I think this is what I'm supposed to say. Oh, I remember when my first computer was only 16 megabytes or something like that but I'm not going to. All right. Oh, swatches. This is fun. All right, so here's a good place. So we can kind of jump out here. We can grab this object, right? Again, I wanna do this pretty fast, uh, but this is vector illustration and this is getting started. So I don't wanna lose anybody who's new here. So um, notice how I have the selection tool. I have the direct selection tool. You're constantly toggling between these two, right? You can go V, and then A, A to direct select, V is just your selection tool. So direct select, A, boom, boom. So you kind of toggle back between those because once I've drawn a shape right in here, right? I can change what I can do, obviously, with these different points. So I'll hit A, I'll kind of zoom in on this and I can select this point and manipulate it accordingly. I'm just gonna make a quick leaf, right? So we'll take this uh, as I select this, I get these additional points. It's like, hey, I don't have to worry about converting this to a Bezier point because some people will go in and they will use this. This anchor point tool is hugely powerful. So between the three tools for editing, it's gonna be uh, your direct selection, your sub selection tool, and then your anchor point tool. So your anchor point tool, you'll come down in here and you're like, oh, I'm gonna curve this out. And you'll like make it into a leaf that way. So you can click, drag, just like, that. Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Tim just got a new computer today. Is that what I'm hearing? All right, here's another um, rectangle and I'm going to use the direct selection tool and I'm going to grab uh, just this point and I'm going to drag this in. So when I drag this in, look at how much better this leaf is going to look compared to this one because I'm actually manipulating these fun little control points, right? I can zoom that out, right? Take this point and drag this back out as well, right? So again, you have a lot of control with these little control points, uh, which you just didn't have before, 
But there's my lovely leaves. leaves. Let's change the fill color. Boom, there we are. And um, maybe make sort of a different green on the outside, something like that. You get the idea. Hello from Nepal. How's Nepal doing? All right. Cool, there's our, our two leaves. I'm gonna move through this really fast cause I wanna do like a cool, I wanna do a pattern shirt like this. I wanna get into something like this, like this Rhino. And I have other files that I wanna get into as well. So some things that we're gonna create that should be pretty exciting, okay? Let's go back. So here we are just drawing with a line. We have that, increase the size, da 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 da. There it is, just like that. Some of you wish, I bet you Tim, and those of my long-term, like long-time Illustrator users, wish there was an, a shortcut key to increase the stroke size. I agree, I wish there was as well, right? Uh, you could always, any field, you just tap on it and then you start using your arrow keys and uh, you could do that. And if you hold down the shift key, you can increase it by increments of 10. Okay, but there's our little pop. Let's get rid of that one. Let's take this one. What do we do to duplicate? I wanna duplicate this leaf. Ryan, Ryan, what's up, Ryan? Ryan Beckford in the house. Man, I wanna show you some cool stuff. Let's drag this over. Actually, let's take this. If I hold down the option key and drag, I'll duplicate it. So option, drag, that will duplicate it. You could go to your reflect tool. And a lot of these tools, like to reflect, you'll click and you're like, well, I actually want it exactly flipped like 180 degrees. Okay, we'll just double click on that tool. All these tools have additional settings. So I'll just double click on it and I'll just go ahead and flip it vertically, right? Boom, there it is, flipped vertically. And now we have that perfectly set up like so. And um, let's make, again, our fun flower. But I'm gonna make a quick flower right now and then I'm gonna do this on Illustrator for the iPad, okay? Um, hopefully you're not getting intermittent screen reflect, screen, um, screen stuff. I hope that's not the case. Let's take the ellipse tool. Let's throw a little yellow and a little off, like a gold color. Let's do that, there we have that. Let's go in here and play with this some more rounded rectangle, shoop. Hot pink, hot pink. Uh, again, I have the the ability to come in here and watch this. I, I'm going to show you some things that you run into on the desktop that you're going to be like, oh, that's kind of annoying. And I'm going to show you how Illustrator on the iPad relieves this because right now I'm moving this content in, right, like that. That actually doesn't look bad. If I decide I want to remove that point, I could hit the minus key that will select the pen tool minus, right? So delete anchor point tool or pen tool minus tool. <laughs> <laughs> Go over here and then remove. See how it changed? When you remove that one point, it kind of drastically changes the shape. Okay, and I'm gonna show you that that's not the case when we jump into Illustrator on the iPad. Okay, so just remove those. It's not a big deal for what I'm doing right now. Come over here, the pedal. <sighs> Illustrator, getting started, okay. Ooh, Chris using gold, is learning golden ratio logo design. Uh, ooh, can you drag an anchor to curve it at? You better not talk to me. Um, 1.618, uh, I don't know. If you wanted to do something in specific increments, um, you would have to just do that math. But the cool thing is, if I decide I wanna move this next, this leaf, and I want this leaf to be uh, at a different uh, spacing, so the X position is currently at 288, I could do that. You could do uh, multiplication in here or any sort of basic math. So we could do 288 times two, or plus, this is what I would do, I'd do plus, 
you know, one, I'd have to figure out all that math, but you know, there you go. You could do those math operations uh, in Illustrator. All right, cool. Let's move on. Right in here, we have a stacking issue. I'm curious for, hello, Kim from Idaho. I'm curious as to who uses, some people just don't use the layers panel at all uh, in Illustrator. Like it's totally up to you. Um, notice as I twirl this down, these are all these sub layers of this main layer. So I have this path, right? That's on top of everything else. Obviously I want it to be underneath everything. So what do I do? Go right over here and I can drag it down, right? Just like that. Another thing people will do is they will use the command open bracket, open bracket, bop, 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 move it down, closing bracket, move it up, right? So that's what I'm sure you pros are doing, right? In this case, I just need it above the ellipse. Another thing I can do to get away from all of this is I can have this content down here on a, an entirely different layer. Okay, so let's move through this really fast. I'm gonna try to do this, make this a little bit more stylish. because right now I'm not crazy happy with how, how cool it's not, to be honest with you. Um, but say for this situation, I wanna take those and put them on a different layer, cut them right up here, and then we can do a paste zoop, in place. Bam, there it is. Now I can move this one below. So this will be the you know, stem, this will be the flower. All right, I don't wanna lose anybody who's like a long-term like Illustrator user, right? Um, some of you might, may or may not know this, selecting this particular um, shape. And one thing I will do when I just start out, like I said in the beginning, the size doesn't really matter because we could always change that. Okay, so the size of the artboard doesn't really matter. In fact, I don't even like seeing the artboard. So what do I do? I typically hide the artboard because I don't like this gray up here. So that's what I'll do. I'll do hide artboards. And now we have all this lovely white space we can work with. Okay, so right up here, we'll take this. Um, I'll use my uh, rotate tool right over here. This is one way of doing things. There's a thousand ways of doing this. But uh, again, I'm showing you some things that are, we're gonna do on the desktop that we're gonna then repeat on the iPad. So here it is, I have this object selected. I've gone to the lovely rotate tool. Right down here, I'll click, but I'll hold down the option key, right? Or alt key if you're on a PC, click, and I get this dialog and I drink a cup glass of coffee. I'm working on a Mac. Yes, I am, sir. Nadia just said, hi, everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone, including Nadia. This feature has been around in Illustrator since probably Illustrator 88, right? Which is the first major version. So we'll go to preview. And I just wanna rotate this like 45 degrees. So I can say, actually I wanna do it, because I like things going clockwise, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna do negative 45 degrees, right? And we're gonna do a copy, right? So we're gonna copy, boom, there it is, right? And you guys know the next step, because this is like a step and repeat, which is used a lot in Illustrator. Command D, bam, 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 right? There we have our lovely flower. This content's on another layer, right? I was like, can always come in and adjust accordingly, right? But that's the idea. When scaling, okay, I also wanna scale this up. And it scales up okay. But uh, I wanna show you this. You guys uh, oftentimes might deal with preferences. These are the main two settings and preferences that you need to keep an eye on. Go to Preferences, General, and right in here, anytime you start sizing things up and down, be aware of whether this is checked and like any of these, honestly, uh, mainly these two, Scale Corners, I always scale corners, right? But Scale Strokes and Effects. So if I want to uh, make sure that this stem always has that theme, like that is, is um, you know, what is it? One eighth the thickness of this leaf, it will remain one eighth the thickness of that leaf, 
right? So that's what I'll do. I'll scale strokes and effects, take this, scale it up. Notice how it made that stem much thicker, and that's actually what I want, okay? Cool, you guys get the idea. Uh, <laughs> okay, Jan Eric says he, wish, he thinks that uh, they had a, a, a wallpaper like this uh, in the in the seventies. Okay, if I wanted to make this shirt design, good thing I could. Anything's always editable. I can jump in, select this, and say, "Hey, you know what? I decided everything needs to have a black stroke. I decided that everything needs to have a white fill." There we are. I decided that this is really ugly. Why did it not do that? I want more consistency, right? Remember, this is a stroke, and this happens a lot. You run into these jams. You're like, "Oh, and this is." The, every everybody has to know this. This is what makes anything look kind of amateurish is when your stroke size isn't the same, right? So right here, as I select this one, I can easily see in the, my properties panel, which is your new best friend, is one point, right? And this one down here is 1.7. I want to have consistency with all my strokes. Now I'm going to select everything. It's not going to do it perfect. I'm going to give it all a stroke of three or even four, because the cool style these days is to make everything kind of thick and chunky like this. But what did it do down here? Oh, it didn't kind of do this right. Like, I actually want this to be like a stem. A couple different ways we could do this. We could redraw it, right? Which is probably what I would suggest, is I would jump in and use a rectangle tool, like so. And then I would grab this bottom, because we want to make it look like it's coming out of the soil, and we'll just round it like so. Something like that would work, okay? I don't know, that's what I'm thinking so far. If you happen to want to keep this stroke, right? Remember this, this was the other stem, like so. You can take any stroke and you can outline it. Uh, well, expand it. You can expand the fill in the stroke. Now it's expanded that stroke, right? That's under object, expand appearance. And now this stroke is now an actual shape. Since it's an actual shape, I can make sure that, you know, it has a stroke of black and the inside's white. Uh, what about stroke when your, when your subject is going to be big or small? Yes, okay, perfect, Froja. This is what happens, like, we drew this. I'm not crazy about this. I feel like there's so many, you know, it's like we created our shape. There's so many different artistic ways we can interpret this. And I really want to get carried away. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. All strokes are relative, Box. Exactly, Jan Eric. All strokes are relative. So let's say I want to create uh, a field of daisies. Okay. If I take this, right, and move it over here just by holding down the Alt key, I've duplicated it. I will take this, I'll scale it down, right? Actually, let's do this. Yeah, watch when I scale it down, zoop, it's scaling down that stroke, right? Look at what it did. This stroke is like probably one, one, uh, one point, and this one's still at our five. So what if we want to scale this down, right? We want to scale this down, but keep the stroke the same size. We'll go into preferences. Again, that's right in here. We don't want to scale the strokes and effects, right? But scale the corners, right? So now this is going to be the same thickness. It's going to be more dense, but now when I scale it down, it's basically the same thickness as we can see. So it does make it look a little bit different. Um, I'm not, not sure if I like that or not, but that's super helpful, right? Again, we are making the pattern for this shirt. Why not? There's more we can do with it. This, ha this is typically the, the situation is I always want my strokes to be the same size regardless of what I'm doing. So, uh, you want the sky to be blue? All right. So that's your keep all strokes relative. Oh, here's how you do that. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Deep breath. I think in the easiest way to I don't, I don't know if this is the best illustration for this. Let me, sh I don't know. This is, this is kind of getting into the weeds, but if you want to keep all strokes relative, what if the client comes to me and uh, let's just do this for the sake of doing it. We're going to have delicate little petals. 
There they are. We're gonna take this down to one. Okay, so this is, this is gonna come in really handy, especially if you're doing technical illustration. What if you want all of these strokes to be 50% um, as thick? So they, you want all the strokes to be cut in half 50%, right? It would mean going to each one of these and saying, oh, I gotta make this 0.5, right? That's what you could do. And if it's a technical illustration, it's gonna be such a pain in the butt. Right, so what you wanna do is you wanna take this and I will just duplicate it off to the side just so we can compare it to the original. How this is set up now is if I scale it down, it doesn't scale the stroke. Okay, so this is what I wanna do. Hopefully this makes sense. Let's go into general. Let's turn on scale strokes and effects. I would scale this down 50%, right? So it's scaled down all the strokes 50%. Now I'm gonna go back into preferences and I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? When I size it back up, don't scale up the strokes. Now when I size it back up, boom, all those strokes are now 50% their size, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, drafting with thick lines. So hopefully that makes sense. That's huge if you wanna just like decrease or increase the strokes globally it's a matter of uh, s scaling the strokes, sizing it down, turning off scale the strokes, and then sizing it back up. All right, let's move on. Okay, so here's my okay flower. <laughs> we can make this a fun pattern. There's like so many things I wanna do. Here's the wallpaper, right? We could turn this into um, a pattern as well. A lot of you might know this. Go into object pattern make, right? Here's our lovely pattern. Oh, there it is. Let's make this a little larger. We'll do 400 by 400, something like that. Let's do 600. There we go. Here's our lovely pattern. Do you guys like this? Now we can make that easily make this a pattern, dragging that down right over here. Oh, this one. Let's go ahead and again, let's select all of these. You get the idea. Change the color to something else. Ah, group it. G, ah, so you pro level guys. I get it, you like your pro level, I love it. So in this case, this might get kind of confusing, but typically if I drag this around, it will replicate it on the other side, right? And it does a pretty good job, but things are getting lost. Look, it's missing a leaf. What's going on here? Just go in and group it, Command G, boom. Now everything, it recognizes it as one complete unit and you don't have that problem anymore. But now we can make our field of daisies. We could change the color of these as well and all that fun stuff, right? Position them accordingly, you get the idea. Cool, cool, done, done, pattern, pattern, bow, bow, there you are. All right, Chad, how are you guys, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's not the greatest. I love, I'm really into black and white, guys. I'm so boring right now. <laughs> I just really love black and white, but let's switch to the iPad because I think that'll be a lot of fun. 30 minutes in, I finally get to switch to the iPad. This is gonna be a blast. By the way, everyone, like, this stuff that I was showing you earlier, this was made, this was made on the iPad, right? So I did this all in Illustrator and the iPad. It's not out yet, but it's coming soon, and I'm super excited about it. So, let's go ahead and jump into this now, and hopefully my voice doesn't trail out uh, because I am, um, pointing my head down a little slightly. Cool, Ryan Beckford's learning. Ryan, you know stuff. Ryan, didn't you make a mural or something? Come on, you know stuff. All right, so check this out. It's a good refresh, uh, but let's go to create new. What we just did on the desktop, we can dive into on the iPad. This is Illustrator on the iPad. See off to the side, we have a number of tools. In fact, I can 
kind of move my big head out of the way. But we could see a number of tools zoop, uh, on the side and a lot of things that we're familiar with. Again, Illustrator on the iPad. Uh, first thing I would do is I grab some source images, right? So I have like, I think I have some flowers in here, right? So there we go. There's a daisy, there's a rose. There's a poppy. There's a number of fun shapes we can make. First off, I'm gonna make that daisy that we just made a second ago. Remember, we just made that on the desktop and I'll kind of switch over. Wait for it, Paul, where's your mouse? Okay, let's get into this. Boom, here we go, shape. Let's do, like we do an arrow, let's draw out a circle. There's our lovely circle with a stroke of genius. No, a stroke of black. There we have it, right? We get layers, we get the properties for this, right? I can just scale that up like so. Uh, but again, I'm gonna make that quick daisy really fast, right? I can do this actually a number of ways. I'm gonna do this, boom, rectangle, there it is. Oh, guess what? We get this control point, Zoop. curve it in like so. We can go in and edit this as well, just like I edited on the desktop, let's double click on it. Oh, I have access to these individual points, right? So if I move this in a little bit, Maybe I'll move in this side, like that. This is my favorite part. Ready for this? Remember on the desktop, when I deleted this point, it changed the shape. Okay, I wanna delete that point, kind of smooth it out a little bit, but I don't. I wanna retain the shape overall of this petal. So I'll go in there, I'll select it, and I get this heads up display. Hopefully everybody can see that, it's right. Yep, there. Okay, I'm gonna select the one that has an X and I really wanna scale this up again. Oh, baby. Uh, let's do this. Cool. Wait for it. I'm gonna make this so easy to see. It's gonna be ridiculous. There we are. Let's do that. Ready? There we are. Uh, this item to remove that anchor point that uh yeah that bezier point but retain the shape so i removed it and it actually retains that curve let's do it right up here just for fun we're going to push it to its limits sorry it's actually down here by the way it's that little button right there let me push it over live i'll hit that button again and we'll watch it we'll watch it change let's move it back again just trying to show you guys what you can do. There we go, let's go back to this full screen. It's a little bit easier to see. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just removing those points, right? And uh, it does its best to kind of retain the shape. So hopefully that makes sense. That was okay, Paul. Let's go into our circle. Maybe make it an oval. Let's bring it over here. Here's our lovely petal. Remember we did a copy, we could do a duplicate like we did on the desktop, we'd move it over here. What would we do? We would type over here 45 degrees, negative 45 degrees or whatever, right? So that's what I would do. I would duplicate this again, move it over 90 degrees, right? Like that, that's how we typically make the flower. Some of you might, have, might know about this because we did show it at max but let's select that petal. We'll go off to the side, and just so everybody can see it, it is the lovely, whoop. Let's do this, baby. Yeah. All right. Can I make the shape bigger? I can, yeah, I can do everything. Well, yeah, I can make the shape bigger. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make sure it all fits in the screen. There it is, let's move this over. Maybe scale this down, selecting this object. And now we have this radial repeat, which is what I'd wanna do. Radial repeat, selecting that. And sure enough, there's our lovely like radial that we can work with, right? Go like that, maybe make it up top. Uh, maybe we want more petals. We're gonna as, add as many petals as we want, as you can see right here. I think it just needs to be like that, to be honest with you. 
just kind of light. Um, and then I can kind of move on. Although I want another, like that looks pretty good. Taking those, moving them over. Let's take this again, let's duplicate it. I'm gonna have a second one and I'm just gonna rotate it 45 degrees, something like that. Um, eh, you know, you know what? I'm just gonna play with this. See what I'm doing right here? I actually want petals to be in the background. Let's take that, let's move it down. There we go. And I'm just playing with the petals kind of behind it. But uh, again, I could do something like that. Maybe they're all at a slight angle. Mm, that's not really a daisy, but you get the idea. Oh, shoot. So sorry, everybody. Ah, did not edit my screen, but what I was doing is just kind of coming in here and changing the rotation of this, right, to get something kind of unique. It's best just kind of straight and level like that as, I, as I'm learning. Um, we have properties off to the side, but you really can't control. We do have the, oh, we do have the, Radial repeat, north, true north, enter. There we go, we have like a true north right there, it looks like. Wait, hold on. No, this is the number, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I'm decreasing and increasing the number of items, which you could just drag right here. So that's all I'm doing at this point. Okay, so there's our daisy, we're done, right? Take it, you know, shrink it down. The uh, stroke size definitely needs to be smaller for all of this. Let's take it and go like that. Let's do something even more fun with this. Uh, let's just jump in and draw a curve like that. Beautiful curve. By the way, I use the pencil so much. I use this pencil so much because check this out. Let's just kind of, um, let's think about uh, what else I can draw. Like, let's do a, like a calla lily, which is another, we could look at a number of flowers over here. I'm gonna do a calla lily because it's, it has a very organic shape and there's very few lines to it. All right, so we'll come in here, we'll select the pencil. The pencil is actually set to smooth off to the side and I can jump in and just say, whoa, smooth like so. Right, coming in here, selecting that, make that smooth like so, okay? Coming in here, let's do smooth, let's do smooth. Um, I'm gonna take that down like that, kind of like that. And let's get rid of that color right there. Better yet, let's give it a color, but move it to the back. All right. For a lot of these, if I decide I don't want these points, just like on the desktop, we can go in here and we can say, hey, you know what? Uh, round the corners and change the caps so they're nice and curved. Right, so that's what I want in this case. Let's move this over a little bit. This is now behind, so it's actually just much easier to work with. We can come in and straighten this out. Anytime I don't want um, a curved line, I could just double tap on it and it will change from a bezier to like a straight line. Okay, so that's all I'm doing in this case. Make that like that. There we are, here's our lovely calla lily. Does need the inside as well. Um, let's take this. And uh, let's just grab, again, I want something like really straight. Maybe I'll do something like that. There we go. That's what I want. Okay, we're still, this is, this is why it's not being released yet. There are some, some little, some, just a couple of like little issues. that uh, I'm running into. But again, in this case, we only want part of this. Bam, bam. Guess what, going into that shape, let's remove those, oop. There we go. Don't hit delete. I do this so many times, I was hitting delete on my keyboard and you just need to hit uh, this trash can right here. So I'm just click, select the point, delete, select the point, delete, just like that. Okay, let's bring it. Oh wait, and then it disappears. Yeah. 
Oh, it's so interesting, eh? There we go, let's move this back into place. I'm gonna do this one more time, by the way. Double click, and now you can edit the actual shape. I wanna add, actually those points are already added, but then I wanna go and double click, select that point, hit delete, select this point down there, hit delete, select this point down here, hit delete. And it's actually right in the background, and I don't know why I cannot select it right now. So let's turn off these other things. There it is. There it is. Let's move that up. Let's turn on everything. Come on, little buddy. Come on, guy. Come up to the top. Wait for it. Wait for it, people. How are we doing? I have not looked at chat because you know what? I'm busy drawing. Oh, that was giving me some difficulty. Let's do this one more time because I'm not going to be outdone by this. Draw it. Shrink it up like that. Again. Basically, I'm working on a new layer. So it does not give me grief anymore. Boom. Boom. Boom, there we go, that works. Okay, cool, we got our flowers. Ah. All right. Uh, you could just go ahead, Google Illustrator, um, Illustrator for iPad beta, and you can apply to be on the beta. Um, right, cool. All right, let's just do this one more time. Uh, let's do a field. I could do a whole field of flowers or something, but I'm just gonna do a simple curve like that, taking the same shape. Radio repeat. Take this, and then I would just kind of connect them like so. Boop, like that, right? I'm making a carnation, basically. Duplicating it, so this is my second one. I'm gonna shrink it down, place it like so, and make it a little bit larger. But again, I can always use that control point at the top to bring that into position however I want, okay? There's that one, let's duplicate it again. Here's our third, shrink it down. Um, this, In this case, I want this curve to be a little more shallow, or excuse me, actually a little more, like just actually smaller overall. You can grab that, adjust the size. Right, you can see like I've done, decrease the number since it's smaller. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of doing the obvious. So hopefully that makes sense. Maybe kind of like that. There we go. That's supposed to be like a carnation, okay? Which carnation off to the side is one of these guys. So I'm kind of doing a version of that carnation. Cool. Uh, does it, so we're just in our beginning phases. Currently we have publish and export. We don't have a time-lapse export right now. There is a live stream button right in there. So that's a potential of something that we're working on. All right, take that down. And then we have those, those three. Let's come in here, let's get rid of this. I really, oh gosh, I would love to do like a lovely rose. Should we do a lovely rose really fast? Again, I just want to do some stuff quickly. Often new subject is a new layer, right? Let's get rid of that. Let's do something nice and flowy. So it's like, like that. Let's kind of connect that like that. Let's maybe make this go like this. Mm, yeah, uh, it didn't turn out as cool as I thought it would. But I do need some extra little parts right in here. Select this. Let's 
Take that down. Take this down. Kind of like that. There we go. There's our there's our rose. Uh, Paul, can you get me a job at Adobe? No, but you can go to jobs.adobe.com and you can get yourself a job. I want you to earn it, buddy. I know you can do it. Right, there we go. Let's do this one more time. Like so. There we have it, folks. There's our rose. Again, doing everything pretty quickly, introducing you to, or kind of showing you Illustrator on the iPad. As you can see, just trying to deduce that to the simplest form possible. All right. Uh, you lived in SF. Jan Eric, did you, you came and hung out in the Adobe Lounge and they kicked you out? <laughs> you just hanging out? I'm glad everybody's hanging out with me today. Uh, I do want to review, ah, I did want to review the schedule right now. It's perfect timing. Let's take a look at that schedule, shall we? Right on. So you can see kind of what we have going on today. Get a chance to drink some coffee, making it more, making my shirt design. Uh, we have Jesus up next and uh, some Photoshop compositing this morning. Ah, that's good stuff. You know, caffeine is awesome. Okay, so uh, then we also have uh, Andrew Illustrator's Daily Creative Challenge. You can see the schedule above me, right? It's actually below me as well. So you go to behance.net forward slash Adobe Live. You'll see the schedule below me. Everybody's on the same page. But shout out to all my coworkers. They're fantastic. Clicking back over. A lot of you, did anybody see that? Did anybody notice that? Yeah, guess what? It's still in beta. And yeah, it actually crashed. But if you notice, uh, this is a, an Illustrator Cloud document. So as I launch Illustrator again, oh, that's where it is. I never saved this file, but actually it was being auto-saved. And here it is. Here's my rose. Looks like I do need to kind of jump in and draw the stem like I was doing earlier. And let's make sure you get it the right size. But I just got to pick up those last few elements as well and make sure they're the same. Size of thickness. There we are. Curve it, shrink it, pack it, ship it. Get that. There we are, done, done. All right, so we have that squared away. It just is called Untitled 21. Yeah, because I'm really good at naming things. Okay, we can strategically start to make all these. Let's take this and remove it. And uh, with these shapes that I've made, I might throw um, maybe a couple more leaves in there, but really what I wanna do is I wanna select those and I will go into, rather than doing a radial repeat, we're gonna do a grid repeat. Oh, there's so many things. Ah, this is gonna be so awesome. Grid repeat, because we're making my shirt. There it is, grid repeat. And it does the obvious, right? I can control how dense or loose this is. I actually wanna draw another flower in here. Okay, so that is my plan. Kind of like in XD, you can extend that down. It's kind of like the repeat grid in XD. 
But now I'm gonna jump in here and uh, just kind of clean up a couple things. Because first off, this is really bothering me, this line right here. So double click on it, select that, hit delete, hit delete, there we go. There we go, that's kind of kind of what I wanted. But also, I wanted to jump in here and add to this another element. So uh, in this case, boy, this I'm really pushing it to its limits. Maybe we will just kind of start off to the side just for fun. So let's just make a new layer. Because there's one more thing I want to show you. Actually, there's about 50 things. Let's come in here, remove that. Because I'm thinking most most flowers are very symmetri symmetrical. Um, I can use um, a mirror repeat. Now you do have to draw something first. So there's my lovely line. Change this point or stroke size to seven point. There it is. Taking this element, now we'll go into mirror repeat. Now we have this mirrored, okay? So now I can come in. Again, I can remove these points. I have full control over all this, all these elements. Right, I can bend that like so. so what I want to make is kind of like a, a, a tulip. Let's bring this up. In fact, let's make this sharp. I want this end to be sharp like so. And let's round it. There we are. Kind of like that. There we go. Let's draw another element too off to the side. Like so. There we have that part. Um, off to the side, mirrored. There we go, you get the idea. Probably wouldn't do this last piece mirrored, but let's just try this. Let's undo that. Got this option. I'll hold this down and I'm just gonna draw a straight line. There we have it. Okay, cool. There's our lovely tulip. That, again, I can always double click on it, kind of come in here, kind of move this around, kind of get a better composition for that. Okay, um, Arrow is on mobile, it's on a mobile phone. Uh, I, I don't, they don't have an iPad version. Um, maybe you can install it on an iPad, I've not done that yet. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're just gonna copy it, copy to clipboard, shut that off. Let's go back in here, Let's double click inside of here. Hold on, wait for it. Oops. <sighs> kind of breaking things. But anyways, you guys get the idea. I'm gonna move on if I could. Uh, I wonder how downloading fonts will work in the app. Yes, um, I can add text to this as well, which is a great idea. Just kind of want to undo everything because I kind of broke it. There it is, it's back. Um, right down here, th these are my grid repeat options. Let me try one more time. Yeah, not so much. All right. Let's just have that right there. Obviously, I can integrate text as well. But this is vector illustration, and uh, this is not necessarily vector graphic design, so I'm kind of shying away from uh, doing this. Let's click over. Uh, summer. Let's do summer. There we have it. Adjust the different properties, Let's scale it up a lot. By the way, I can actually come in and adjust the leading like I wanna do. Uh, also the line spacing right through this um, option on the object, right, which is nice. Let's flip that. Let's give it a stroke of seven. There we are, let's make sure this fill is set to white. 
and there we are with our text. All right, cool. All right, one hour, geez, whew, times fly, time flies when you're having fun. Uh, this is all vector illustration. So um, one thing I wanna do is like, I've been drawing all this stuff kind of from scratch, kind of by, uh, you know, using a reference photo that I had earlier. Um, you could use all the reference photos that you want. You can do pretty much anything you want. And anybody starting out that's like brand new to illustration, I encourage people like, Illustrator was actually made to um, uh, to trace photos. Like literally you had a template file that you would load up and then you would trace over it. So um, that's just something to keep in mind and that's what I encourage people to do. Go out there, find something, uh, anything. I, I wanna actually draw a bird, so I'm just gonna do a search for a bird. Um, so. Let's switch back over to my desktop. And by the way, guess what? Actually, just to kind of wrap up the uh, Illustrator on iPad version, uh, what I was doing. Um, yes, what I want to do is I actually want to get this on my desktop. So if I take this, uh, any one of these, but if I take this, I, most people think you want to export it out a quick export as an Illustrator file, right? When you don't, you just don't need to do this. This is an option. Sure, I can do this, click right there. It also says, hey, you know what? This is a cloud document. You don't need to go through that extra step, right? Don't need to do that at all. Because if you take a look, this is a cloud document. It's called Untitled 21. I can change the name. So Summer Collage. Saving that, that's being synced. We'll go to my desktop. Move this over. Ah, oh, what's up, Melanie? If you guys are new here, feel free to say hello. I'd love to just give you a warm welcome. I only have 30 more minutes and then we'll be switching the gears and jumping into some good old, uh, some Photoshop action. All right. Can you, can you open a Fresco project from your cloud here to continue working on it? No, you cannot, not currently. So you can't go from Fresco to Illustrator currently. You could obviously, you could open up an image of it, but uh, you know, it deals with vectors differently. So that's all. So here we are, Summer Collage. I just opened this up in my browser, by the way. So here it is, Summer Collage. I typically like sharing these to kind of get your feedback, but I'm gonna be changing this a lot. So let's allow commenting. Let's copy this link, right? We could paste this into chat. Um, should be going through. Can I distribute the petals around the center of the flower? Yes, you just have to click on the center of the flower. All right, so there it is. Uh, we can also open this document in Illustrator. If you click right up here, open this in Illustrator. But before I even do that, I'm gonna go to Illustrator. I'm gonna launch it and you'll see it in my cloud documents. Works the same way like it does in Photoshop. Really straightforward, okay? So don't, you don't have to worry about um, converting or transforming or anything. You go to cloud documents. Oh, there it is, summer collage already set up for me. So there's zero things I had to do. The only thing I did basically is just name it Summer Collage, right? So there it is. I could select it, it will download it, and then I can edit it. So this is super fun. Uh, yeah. Okay, there's probably maybe some unsupported objects. And this is the situation. This is what currently happens, just so you know, uh, is, let's turn off some of this stuff, since the repeat grid uh, isn't supported currently, it's not like there's repeat grid on in Illustrator. Um, that's kind of why it brings it in this way. It's a clipped group. Uh, probably what I do is I would select this. I would release clipping mask, and then here's all of the shapes in here, sure enough, okay? So there's everything. There's my tulip that I created off to the side. I guess I did not copy the line. 
But there it is, and there's also the text, right? So you get the idea. Cool. Let's take this down like that. Everything's fully editable. Come in here. Let's remove that. Let's put this flower in place. Summer. Like so. Let's have some more fun with the font. We can play with this all day long. All right. <laughs> oh man, Jan Eric, you are too kind. You just like make you just make me so happy. You make me so happy, my friend. I'm, 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 I hope people are learning things. Again, this is Illustrator, or excuse me, Vector Illustration. Um, I have this summer situation. Um, like I said, I wanna add to it as well. I do have these other flowers, just turn that on. You can see all these amazing flowers. I'll double click on this. This is a whole pattern and all this stuff. I actually might just wanna grab these four, right? And just treat them a little bit differently. Um, right? go like so pasting it in like so as you can see on a new layer uh, again what do we want to do we can go into our preferences and maybe determine if we want to scale down the strokes and effects right we might want to consider doing that I'll click OK I will in this case because otherwise it's going to be too detailed oh hello Paste this one more time. Uh, yeah, there's lots of lots of things that I still need to work out with this. So I think I'm gonna just leave this alone, to be honest with you. We've already gone through this situation, right? We've already played with all this stuff. You guys get the idea. I'm gonna turn that off because I'm gonna work on something else. This is what I encourage you to do. We have this, let's, uh, again, go out here. Let's go find a bird on stock, on uh, Adobe Stock. Uh, would love to get a suggestion for any type of bird or some sort of animal to go inside of this, this whole uh, summer collage that we're making, right? I have 30 minutes. We're going to knock out an awesome bird. And that's the idea. All right. Yeah, so let me know what, uh, I love toucans, but I think a lot of people know that because they're so colorful, so like perfect bird to go in there. So let me know, uh, like toucan would be a good one. Uh, what else? What's another? So lovely toucans right in here. Ah, beautiful. This one's already licensed. I'm gonna re-download that one. Let's do it. Let me know if you have more su suggestions. I think it's fun in Illustrator to say, hey, you know what, how would, how would I interpret this toucan, by the way? Right, let's take this, let's bring in this toucan. Here's this toucan bird. A number of things we could do this. We could go quite literally with making this. We can make an icon version of this toucan as well. So here's the toucan, we'll go to a new layer, we'll lock that down. I'll keep this suggestion, a shoebill bird. Oh, I just gotta figure out what that is. S-H-O-E. Quetzal. Wow. Oh, bird of paradise would be fun. Good stuff. Oh, he's ridiculous. He's not real. This guy's not real. He's just, he's got a, he's a, he has a grin like he's up to something. And I love it. Uh, hummingbird. Uh, red cardinals. Oh, red, red cardinals are beautiful. I'm looking kind of for like, um, a bird that will, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. let's do a save as, by the way, you can always take a file, you could save it to your desktop. This is the summer collage to save to my desktop. So you're not tied to having it as a cloud document, just so you know. All right. Uh, two can play that game. Oh, so many fun. Ooh, macaw. Oh, love it. Let's do red cardinal. Okay. I'm going to try and knock this out really fast. That's my goal. Ah, oh, Cardinal is beautiful. This is a gorgeous bird. It's so, it's so pretty. It's 
Such a pretty bird. Done. And I'm gonna do the macaw parrot. Let's check out macaw. An angry bird. Yes, remember when that was all the rage. Oh, this is fun too. I actually should have some of these images somewhere. Um, ah, let's do this. We're gonna do this one. We need some in flight. We could use some that are just chilling, just sitting there. But I really like this one. This is a great one too. All right. Cheers, everyone. Peacock would be fun. Uh, uh, on that note, can I do this really fast? Let's look up my peacock. Hopefully I have pe I'll get. I'll get lucky. Here's a peacock. I've done peacock before. Here's one, as you can see, right? Uh, a lot more detail going into this, right? Let's take this and uh, just disregard this because I'm, I'm kind of showing the final result. Okay, so let's just undo this really fast. Ah, so sorry. Let's get rid of that. There we go. Okay, so let's focus on this peacock. Somebody mentioned peacock, and I just want to show this really fast. Because I did a radial repeat uh, in Illustrator on the iPad, I kind of want to do a radial repeat on the desktop. And how you do that is you go to a So, And what I want to do is I want to repeat this feather. So again, I could go through this laborious issue of, um, you know, selecting the rotate tool. I can click in the center just like we did with a flower and hold down the option key. And in this case, I can say, you know, tw every 20 degrees, go ahead and make a copy. So that's one way of doing things, right? That does what we need. But uh, the problem is if I decide I wanna change the color, I gotta change it everywhere. So I'm gonna roll this back, select this. We're gonna go into effect. Uh, we're gonna go into distort and transform. And then we're gonna transform this uh, petal or this uh, feather. It's not a petal. We're not dealing with flowers anymore. Uh, but right in here, we can say, hey, you know, we'll make five copies, right? And rotate it every 20 degrees, right? Something like that. And sure enough, it rotates it 20 degrees. That's awesome, right? I can say every 20 degrees, we could do 18 and it'll do 100, uh, what, half that. Uh, it's nine, sorry about that. Nine, so just did that 180 degrees. Guess what? It's rotating around the center point. That's what I don't want. So right over here, we wanna reflect right in here. Click right here. Oh, that left side. Oh, thank you very much. So again, I did 120 degrees. So if I did seven, just so you could see that it works. Seven, we can do 18. It's gonna go all the way around. But the cool thing is about this, once I have this set up to nine, I can jump in and say, hey, you know what? I want a fun little dot right here. Let's make it yellow. Or some sort of gold. Make it gold. That's not even a circle. There we go. There's our circle. And it added that dot all the way around. So using those effects, like hugely helpful, because I can always just have that one source image I can change. Okay. Melanie loves Illustrator. Hey, Melanie, so do I. I love Illustrator. I love the fact that we could change this content at any time, right? I love being able to take all this, right? Selecting it all. And I can do an edit colors. I'm gonna recolor this artwork, huge. What I've been doing lately is drawing on Illustrator and iPad, getting to my desktop and then um, recoloring, right? Because this is a feature that I like as well. Recolor artwork, we'll go and lock down these colors. We'll shift this over just to see what happens. We can go to like a lovely red, right? Changing the color of that, that peacock, as you can see, to fire red, all right? All right. Uh, ooh, global edit, yes. V, v Odin, I hear ya. Uh, 
Na Namus and Sage, good to see you here. A. Akater as well. And if you're joining me over on YouTube, jump over to Behance. So we shifted gears, like I've changed that, made it kind of look kind of ugly. I think in the day it looks better this way. Okay, that's the free transform gives you a radial uh, repeat. And there's other repeats you can do. You can repeat something along the line. There's a thousand things you could do uh, right in here. And the cool thing is you can always jump back in and change it. So click right there, there it is, right? We can transform, make some crazy vortexes and all that good stuff, right? So hopefully that makes sense. There's our lovely peacock. Let's go back in here and let's grab some more images. Add some people, do some shout outs. There it is. Here we go, here we go. Drop this in. Somebody wanted a macaw, there's our macaw. Somebody else said we wanted a, uh, a red cardinal which will be really fun to work on as well. So here we are, Red Cardinal, let's do it. It's the simpler of these other, the simpler of them, uh, but right in here, we can start to draw this out. P, P for pen. You can kind of determine what you want to be. Uh, and actually for this, let me, let me do this really fast as well. I can deduce this to its basic form, right? Because what's the, what are the unique fe uh, um, features of this Red Cardinal? Well, it's gonna have a beak. This is one thing I'll do. Let's just draw this out. Ready for this? I'm gonna do a um, sort of an icon version of this bird. Okay, we'll come in here, we'll select these lines. Zoop. We'll round it like so, okay? Of course, one thing it has is it has this fun little part right here that I wanna represent as well. So, bear with me, let's just change that color. Right in here, we're gonna make the front of the head like that. And then I want to make this side also kind of bend that in like that. Um, and I guess we'll kind of see how this works out, right? Uh, for making a beak, this is a great pro tip. You ready for this? You ready for this, Steve? You guys ready? This is awesome. I'm going to take this. I want to turn this into its beak, right? So I'm going to just remove that point. Bam, there it is. I'll rotate it, right? When I rotate it, this is super annoying because I want to make it, I want to give it this long beak and people would try to, it's like, ah, this is, why can't I make this? Like, I just want this side to be pointier. Why, why isn't it working, right? Take this, it was a square that was rotated about 45 degrees. Go up to, um, right up here to object transform and reset bounding box. Did you guys see that? Reset bounding box. That's what I want to do. Hugely helpful. Oh, it's reset this bounding box. Now I have the controls that I want to shrink that like so and bring it right there. Okay. Cool. 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 You get the idea. Oh, hello, I'm still zoomed in. All right. Bam, bam, where's its eye? Okay, pretty big, gorgeous eye, right? The bigger the eye, the uh, smaller the bird will look, I feel like. Features, the larger fe the larger you make the features, the younger it's going to look or smaller it's gonna look. It's like the Disney effect. Rotating this over. Zoop. I kinda wanna give it that fun point. And uh, again, we're just gonna play with this a little bit. Let's go, let's try the pen tool. No, let's not do that just yet. Take this, move this over like so. And I'm trying to decide. All right, here we go. You ready for this? All right, this is huge. Uh, all right. 
Yes, thank you, Jared. That's all I needed. Jared, I just needed some confirmation that that was cool. Uh, here's a situation where like, I kind of want to combine these two, but I don't want to lose all these uh, these Bezier lines when I'm making it, right? I, I don't want to lose this, this line. I don't want to just lose these control points, right? So I'll go over here, notice how it's, let's just select all this stuff. You know, the stroke is eight. Uh, eight. There we go. Okay, so um, so I'd, a lot of people will actually use like the shape builder and they'll combine it together. But then I can't I can't edit this curve anymore. It's like not that easy. So what I want to do, check this out. This is cool. Selecting these two, I'm actually going to get rid of the stroke here. So I'll just get rid of it completely. But what I can do is I can uh, group these shapes. And once it's grouped right down here in the appearance panel, I can say, hey, now give it a stroke. So now I've, oh shoot, should it have done that? Oh, because it doesn't have a fill. I got to work on the fill. <laughs> that was funny. Okay, so there, we're back to nine point. We're not done yet because we'll also add a fill. And here's a fill over the top. And that's what I want, right? Now I have, disregard the beak, but now I have um, this stroke set to eight point and I probably need to double that to 16 but now I have uh, this grouped shape so if I go in here I can always move this around and edit this any way I want and I still have that stroke right so that's what I want in the end because what do I want to do I'm going to take this take this line right there bring that in like that to make a cardinal cool cool thing about this cardinals red so let's change this color to good old red uh red there we are change this uh to black checking the time i have five minutes basically well no more like 10. i probably have a, add a little bit of a highlight right in here Zoop. there we are rid of the stroke and just have fun huh make what you want there's our icon of uh, a cardinal uh, the beak needs to be worked on there needs to be a black portion here like a number of things that still need to be done but again i was making an icon version of a cardinal it's not quite looking right i think that this is kind of funny Right, but again, I have this control to come in here and say, hey, you know what? Let's work on this line because it needs a lot of work. I don't know, I'll play with it some more. I gotta get rid of this stroke altogether. Adjust the beak size, something like that. You guys get the idea. Okay, let's move on, shall we? Uh, yeah. So, so, ooh, using the alt. Anna, did Anna, did you just show me something that I, I, I don't know, which is like happens all the time. Let's say we're gonna do a cloud real fast. Here's our clouds. Select these, what these three shapes. I'm gonna hold down the alt key or option key, ah, to create a compound shape. So that did a grouping, right? So let's flip it. And that worked too. Anna, I like your way better. <laughs> right? But that's awesome. Anna, that is so cool. I did not know that. Now I feel like an idiot. Just hold down the alt key. Funny thing is, it's been there the whole time. Did you notice that? <laughs> oh, it was there the whole time. Again, here's the two objects. And this is what we're talking about. So this is the thing, like, I don't, like, we probably introduced the Pathfinder, and then I just don't know how long this has been here. But here it says Alt to create a compound shape. All right, so now we got it. All right, let's move on. There's our bird. It needs more work. And, uh, yeah, I can spend some more time on it. He's so cute.
<laughs> He's super little and uh, still kind of needs some help. But you get the idea. Extending this out. Maybe he needs a longer tail. I don't know. Something like that. That's that's all we're getting right now. Uh, I'm easily going to uh, run out of time. So what's going to happen? Let's take those. Let's just group it together and move it off. Uh, tomorrow, what I want to get into is to more detailed illustration, where we would take something like this and uh, consider outlining it, right? That's what we would do. We'd come in, click, click, click kind of get the major components of this particular bird and just start layering it and doing everything we need to. A lot of time I will a lot of times I'll use the pencil tool just like I did in Illustrator on the iPad and I'll just make sure it's set to smooth and I'll just start drawing. So I'll just quickly just kind of come in here and draw like so. Right? There's that line. Can't see it too well. Let's just change it to magenta. There we are, and we can always continue that line as well, right? If at any time you decide you want to redraw a part, like this part didn't work out too well, I can come in here. As long as my um, uh, pencil says, hey, first off, this icon says, hey, I'm a new line. That's what the asterisk is saying. I roll over here, it's like, oh, I'm going to edit this line. If I go down here, it says, hey, oh, you're gonna start a new line from that point. So what I'll do is I'll just come over here through half, halfway through this line, wait till that new icon disappears, draw it up, and then just connect it like so. Okay, layers are the cardinal rule. Oh, Chris with puns. I'm all about the puns, man. I'm all about it. Let's lower my seat, I'm a little more centered. All right, looks good so far. How's everybody doing this fine Wednesday, huh? Anybody have any stories? Would love to hear some stories. Zoro's on vacation? What? Where are you going? There's nowhere to go. I'm just hanging out at home. Just hanging out, man. Just hang out, bro. All right, here we are. Let's make sure we get sort of that stroke right there. And uh, what's the easiest way to see this? A uh, lot of times, if you are using the pencil tool, uh, this is another thing I'll do, is option key toggles the smooth tool. So you can start to smooth things out a little bit. Option key, draw over that line, smooth it out. Right, so that's all that's happening there. Hit that minus key, start to remove points as well. Cool. Let's move on for our lovely cardinal. I'm so glad I have tomorrow to work on this. I usually do, um, I'll do like a base sort of shape, if you will. Oh, hello, not that. Again, I'm continuing this line, but I'll usually do a base shape and then I'll start blocking in the colors and then I'll add detail. Like so, there we are. All right. You can see, for instance, if I open up uh, a recent file. Let's take a look. Oh, here's a rhino. Let's open up this rhino just as an example. Here's a case where if we take a look at this, there's going to be the detail layers at the top, right, where I'm creating all these lines. And I did this 100% on the iPad, actually, using the blob brush. And then I'll start blocking in all the colors. Block, 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 you know. You can see as I kind of start to remove those details, we have uh, this color blocking and then here's like the original shape. 
cool. So again, just to kind of catch a vision, since I only have one more minute, you can see how this was put together. But more on that tomorrow, okay? We can get into this detailed type stuff. All right. Let's not ruffle any feathers here. Oh, so many bird puns we're gonna make tomorrow. I'm so excited. Uh, but we're gonna really fill out this summer scene, right? We did icons, started with the basic shapes. We went into Illustrator on the iPad. And now we're gonna make a luscious summer scene with some awesome animals. And everybody's getting along, kind of like Eden. You know, everybody's kind of getting along, chilling. Um, and it should be pretty fun and pretty colorful. So that's the plan. And uh, since it's vector, it will go anywhere else we want it to go because, uh, yeah, everything, everything starts uh, in vector. But thanks for watching, uh, getting started in vector illustration, and we can continue the fun with Jesus Ramirez doing a little Photoshop daily creative challenge. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much. Follow me on all the social medias uh, to see what I end up posting. Thanks, everyone.